Welcome back to Deploying ASAP, Juniper Network's automated support and prevention. In this fourth and final video, we will take a look at Service Insights proactive reporting features, testing and troubleshooting AI scripts, automating the automation via the REST API, and preparing a partner proxy instance of ServiceNow for Juniper Network's partners wishing to support their end customers with the ASAP solution. Devices under management of ServiceNow will have hardware and software information reported weekly to the Juniper Network support servers by means of what we call informational JMB, or IJMB. These servers stage information to be collected by customers' service insight instances, which will be used to report on end-of-life, end-of-sales, and end-of-engineering data, as well as alert you to proactive bug notifications for major issues that may have relevant workaround information to avoid critical outages. From the Applications drop-down list at the top of the menu on the left, select Service Insight. Expand Insight Central and select Exposure Analyzer. The yellow warning sign icons indicate that IJMBs may not have been uploaded or processed. You can wait until the next collection period or use ServiceNow devices to request an on-demand device snapshot. I recommend enabling all columns in this view in the same manner you did for ServiceNow. Look for the EOL and PBN count, and if non-zero, you can quickly view the matching PBNs for the device or devices as filtered from the targeted PBN list. You can also generate full reports, which will include many more details. Let's select the non-zero PBN counts and use the Actions menu to select Generate PBN Report. Provide a report name, emails to submit the report to, and if desired, filter the PBN dates to appear on the report. You can schedule these reports to repeat at a specific time and interval. The downloaded CSV will include details for each device and its corresponding PBN alerts. Clicking the URL will reveal the corresponding targeted PBN in the Service Insight user interface. Clicking the link for the Juniper ID shown in the list will open a browser tab for the corresponding bug ticket with additional information. You can also double-click a targeted PBN to reveal additional information as well. From the PBN Reports menu, you can download a compiled report to a local workstation or use the Actions menu to regenerate a previously configured report. The same options will be available for EOL reporting. From the Targeted PBNs menu, you can select a PBN and use the Actions menu to scan for impact and retrieve a list of all devices potentially affected by a bug. You can also flag, assign ownership, delete, or email information for a PBN. Let's scan for impact, confirm, and click the job ID. Double-click the job row and view the details by clicking the small triangle icon to the left. Just like ServiceNow, you can expand notifications and create a notification for several triggers in Service Insight. Let's run through an example of flagging and assigning a targeted PBN. Select a PBN and use the Actions menu to flag a PBN to a user. In the dialog box, enter a particular user, in this example, User2. Flags can be set to multiple users. You can choose to send an email to that user and click Submit. Now let's assign the PBN to a user. Assignment is limited to a single user at a time. Select Actions again and choose Assign Ownership to PBN. Enter a username. In this case, we will enter User1. Next, let's log out and back in as User1. When clicking the Insight Central menu item, we will be presented with a dashboard that indicates the number of new, flagged, and assigned PBNs. The same can be done by clicking Service Central and Service Now for incidents that may have been assigned to the logged in user. Clicking the My PBNs or My Incidents column will create a filter and display a list of the results. Let's now log out and back in as User 2 and investigate the flagged incidents.
There may be a time in which you need to troubleshoot or test AI scripts, events, and ServiceNow incident creation. Log into a Junos device and use the shell. CD to var db scripts op and run the command AIS event sim sh. You will be presented with a menu of the available events to simulate. Please note the warning that testing daemon crashes can be service affecting. Also, not all events will be triggered on all Junos platforms. You may need to test a few before a data collection script is executed by the Junos event D process. Information about the status and results of the AI script processing can be found in several log files found in the var log directory, namely default-log-messages, op-script.log, eScript.log, and jmb underscore log. A particular event will be dampened on the device to once per hour, so immediately testing the same event twice will not allow processing of the second event. This is to avoid issues with rapidly repeating events. Finally, the JMB data will be compiled in the var temp directory with file names containing the letters AIS. You can list those and also safely remove them if you do not wish to have ServiceNow collect them. Although not shown, you can obtain additional AI script settings from the Junos operational mode with the command op ais-param-set. Much of the data and control for ServiceNow and Service Insight can be found via the REST API. Here we are using Eclipse with the REST Explorer plugin that has been provided with the Juno Space SDK installer. From the Juno Space menu, select Configure Server Profile and enter the applicable information. Clicking the API item shown in the menu to the left, the REST Explorer will retrieve and display the next level of available calls. Juno Space Platform options will be found under the Space Hierarchy. You can expand the Juniper menu to reveal other applications such as ServiceNow and Service Insight. Clicking ServiceNow and then Incident Management and then Incidents will reveal a list of incident IDs. Click an ID to obtain specific information about that incident and you will also be provided with a list of calls you can perform against that ID. For most cases, the appropriate header information will be populated automatically. You can typically replace the term XML with JSON and retrieve response data in JSON format. Calls can be exported to various languages. Please refer to the Juniper Network Support Automation REST API user guide for additional information. Juniper partners looking to provide additional value-added services to their end customers can deploy ServiceNow in a partner proxy mode. End customers will connect and escalate incidents to the partner. Partners can then work directly with their end customers and have troubleshooting information immediately available, or if needed, escalate the incident to JTAC for additional assistance. Both the end customer and the partner will need their own instances of Space and ServiceNow with identical versioning. Service Insight will not be enabled on the end customer's system. Partners will have the opportunity of providing end-of-life and proactive bug notification reporting for their end customers. Juniper partners must contact Juniper Networks to enable back-end communications for incoming partner proxy connections. We will be configuring the partner proxy to accept in-customer credentials. Expand Administration, Organizations, and select Add Member. Provide the credentials, JMB filter level, and configuration options for that in-customer. You will now find the in-customer defined in Organizations. We can modify core file upload settings for each end customer as well. I recommend using SFTP to upload to Juniper via ServiceNow. Now, let's connect the end customer to the partner. You can see which system I'm working on in this video by the text at the bottom right corner. Under the Administration menu, select Global Settings and switch to End Customer Mode. This can only be done for systems that have not yet connected directly to Juniper. You can uninstall and reinstall ServiceNow to reset this, which will result in a loss of all ServiceNow and Service Inside data, or call JTAC to have them reset the connection mode and allow an end customer setup without any loss of data. Select end customer and enter the user interface IP of the partner proxy space instance, configure the email, aging, and dampening parameters, and click save. Still on the end customer setup, expand Organizations and select Add Organization. 
Enter the credentials provided by the partner for that in customer member along with the JMB filter level and click Submit. Return to Global Settings and click Test Connection. You should see a successful connection indicated. Expand Global Settings and click Core File Upload Configuration. Click Update Configuration to reflect the settings established by the Partner Proxy. Click Partner Certificate Configuration to upload the Partner's ServiceNow Security Certificate. As shown, the Partner can retrieve the certificate directly from the browser. After a successful upload, you can view the details of the certificate. Although not shown, I have removed the managed devices from our previous demo and discovered them into this newly deployed end customer system. From the ServiceNow Devices menu, let's create but not submit an on-demand incident. Soon, the incident will be shown in the end customer's Service Central Incidents window. The end customer can request the partner's support by selecting the incident and using the Actions menu to select Submit Case. You can see the status is now shown as submitted. Looking at the partner proxy, we can now find the incident shown in the partner's incidents window along with which end customer submitted the incident. Should the partner require JTAC assistance, the partner can select that incident and select submit case from the actions menu. But first let's acknowledge the end customer's request by creating an end customer case. Select end customer case from the menu. Provide a unique ticket number, a URL for the case link if available, and set the status. You can confirm the creation by clicking the View End Customer Cases menu item. From the end customer's perspective, a new case has been opened and will be visible under the View Tech Support Cases menu as shown. The partner can update the end customer case notes and status, and the end customer from their system can do the same as well as upload additional attachments to the partner. Support system messages such as maintenance window downtimes can be forwarded from the partner to the end customer by browsing to Service Central, Information, Messages, clicking a message, and using the Actions menu to select Assign Message to Connected Members. Although not shown, end customer devices will also be available under the partner's ServiceNow devices, and the same configurations, such as device and address groups, can also be used to define parameters for each end customer's devices. This concludes our Deploying ASAP video series. Thank you very much for your time and please do not hesitate to contact us with any questions you may have. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.